welcome to the show and our today's guest is Jessica Koch and she has an impressive background in sales and business development. Her expertise in marketing keeps her in high demand and she works on national stage with high profile Fortune 500 companies along with government agencies nationwide. This influential and compelling speaker is a great communicator and a highly effective trainer in topics ranging from sales process to leadership to social media marketing training. Participants always walk away with valuable action steps that they can apply immediately to realize success. And I'm very excited to have her here. And so how do you feel being on the show? I'm very excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, great. So other than that, so I want to learn, so how did everything got started for you? So I think I really had my first exposure to sales and marketing uh, as early as high school. <laughs> so um, I was one of the youngest people hired for a conference center. And that was a resort and conference center on the water that often had uh, corporate events and weddings. And um, of course, it was a resort on the water and a hotel. And I got to learn a lot about the sales process and um, large business events. And it was just a lot of fun. So I think um, for me, that was my first exposure uh, to the world of sales and things getting started for me. That's really interesting. So before sales, what were you doing? So you said like in high school before that. So what were you doing? <laughs> well, let's see. One of my very first jobs was actually um, my, my, uh, my very first job was photographing um, other than babysitting and things like that was photographing uh, documents onto microfish way back in the day. Um, I was very young and I got hired to uh, put documents through the machine and I learned the whole process of, uh, you know, condensing that physical paper uh, down uh, to nothing. And uh, and then really from there. I, I, like I said, I started at the hotel at the resort and then I went to radio advertising sales and then I was a leader at a big marketing firm. And um, then, then I went into um, sales for an auditing firm where that's where I began my speaking career, where for over 25 years, I've um, been flown all over the country to speak for different national associations and annual conferences. So uh, my mine got started before sales. There wasn't a whole lot happening. <laughs> yeah, absolutely does. Like no, nothing happens <laughs> that we can say before we are out of high school. That's the thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Or I'd rather say we don't want to talk about like we do a lot, a lot of things it, during our teens which we don't want to talk about. Well, I mean, I was just a young girl. I was still, you know, riding my bike and roller skating. That's that's what I did before my life of sales. <laughs> yeah, that's I, I you know what? I, I haven't roller skated yet in my life. So that's one thing that I want to do. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So now let's get into sales. So what is a sale for you? Like what is what's the definition of sales to you? So the, the definition of sales to me is uh, it's more than purchasing an item or a service. It is uh, moving people to action. So the, I always talk to people that there there's a number of sales you have to make actually before you get the sale, right? The first sale is of yourself. You know, they have to know, like, and trust you. And you know, then you the, the second sale is you get the meeting when you achieve the meeting. So if you move someone to action, make space for you on their calendar and put time with you, then you've made your first sale, right? So I, I think sales is the concept of you know, buying into an idea, a thought, um, a relationship, or moving someone to action um, for something that is mutually beneficial for you and them. Interesting. So if I say in one line, not even one line, so in one word, how do you, would you define sales? In one word? Yes. I would say action then. I guess I'd have to use the word action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree. I would agree. So do you agree with the definition that 
for in terms of sales, uh, a lot of sales people say this. So everywhere, everything that you do is sales. Because whenever, let's say, uh, you're asking for, what do you call it? Let's say a recommendations, a testimonial, even say, like, are you, uh, let's say, you want to join a committee? You, you have to sell yourself for there. So do you agree with it? I would say that I at least agree that sales is um, really highly connected to communication and relationships. And so I think when you're achieving sales um, and sales being a part of everything, I, I guess you could look at it in the sense where it's involved in all of your relationships and communication. Um, so it's very highly tied into relationships and communication. So from that perspective, I would say that, you know, sales is tied into, um, you know, most everything we do, right? Okay, so what's not into sales? What's not a part of sales? I think really just in, in you know enjoying life, right? When we're just hanging out with our family and friends, or you know sitting by the water or kayaking, I don't think sales is involved in that. <laughs> so that that's where I would say uh, that sales are not involved. Okay, that's really interesting. So I I, I haven't actually thought about that yet with the definition of sales. So now, so what do you think, what, what, are, what are the biggest mistakes that people, people make when it comes to sales? I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is, I think there's two. Um, the first one is they don't ask for the sale at all. Well, maybe I think there's three. They don't ask for the sales at all. They don't follow up, you know, so they ask for it the one time, but they, the timing wasn't right for the person. They should get permission to reach back out. So they don't follow up. And I think third is in the sales process, you really do need to pay attention um, to the personality of the person in front of you, uh, because that is going to have a huge factor of what, values they connect uh, to their decision and helping you close the sale. And when you miss that piece, you could uh, you could potentially um, miss over a third of this or two thirds of the sales that are in front of you. So if you you know have prospects, if you have 10 prospects, you could end up with only closing two of them um, and miss out on the rest because you don't pay attention to the personality style and values connected to those other people where you went and made a presentation, you just made the same presentation to all 10 people. Often you have to adjust that and pay really close attention to what matters to the person in front of you. Interesting. So how can a person understand that, let's say I'm talking with someone for the first time, how can I understand his personality? So you really, um, there's several, there's so many personality tests out there and there's so much science based on, on this. Um, but just from a conversation or just from an email or just from what you see a person posting on social media, if you pay attention to some if you do some studying of the science of personalities, right, and you pay attention to key words that are stronger for different personality types based on their values, uh, you can then begin to have an understanding of what's going to matter for them. For example, um, one of the personality sciences, um, especially connected to sales, is called bank. And one of the personality types is, is a blueprint personality. And a blueprint personality is somebody who really likes systems and processes and things to be really orderly and step by step and by the rules. And so if you pay attention that when someone says to you, I really want to know what the process is. Can you really tell me the steps to this? Is there a guide or a checklist for this? If they're asking you these questions and most likely they that's a really high value for them. And so then you want to think about whatever your service or product is that how it's going to solve the solution and how there is a step by step organized process for it and build that into your presentation back to them. So really it goes back to a kind of a tried and true uh, traditional sales skill, skill that's called mirroring. 
So if you're in a presentation with a person, whether it's on Zoom or in person, and the person speaks really fast and um, they're really energetic, and then you want your presentation style to mirror that, speak really fast, be really energetic. And if they're talking about, you know, their, the goals they have, then you want to make sure that you're sharing whatever your product or service is and how it's going to help them reach those goals that they have. And so it's really connecting mm-hmm. at, to what it is the person desires, right? But if they're slow and and they're more laid back and they're more quiet, then you want to s- slow yourself down and pace yourself uh, to them. So that mirroring and that paying attention of the, the little clues they give you in their conversation and what's on their website and what's on their social media posts, like the about section on LinkedIn and the emails you're sending. Um, if you do some research on the, what the different personalities care about, you'll be able to easily pick out and identify those keywords, uh, and that will help you uh, change your conversation uh, to really trigger what values are connected to them and what causes them to move to action or buy into a concept or a product or a service. A really interesting topic. So I was actually looking for that mirroring word that you said because everything was really connected with that. And mm-hmm. other than that, so what are the major personality types that people need to learn most about? Well, in the system, so I'm a certified uh, and licensed in the bank technology. Now there is others, there's Myers-Briggs and um, Predictive Index, and there's all these other uh, sciences and they're all good, right? They all have value. There's a lot of research on it. I just personally like um, this particular uh, technology and personality science. And in this one, which is called Bank, it has um, a nurturer. So that's that's a person who, um, a nurturer is very community focused. They care about causes, collaboration, the community, doing things cooperatively. Those things really mean a lot to them. Um, then there is an action taker. Uh, those people really like to get things done. They're high paced. They love the red carpet experience. They value things like time freedom and fun. And uh, they, you know, they really, if you give them a ton of details and all the science and white paper, and everything, you're going to lose them because they're, they want to get to the point, give me the information. They'll actually pay more for a red carpet experience. If they gonna, if they feel like there's value, they are, they're also the kind of people who really like to be on stage and, um, they wear name brands, you know, they wear high quality name brand kind of things. Um, so that's an action taker. And then there's a blueprint person. And this person is a big time rule follower. They um, really care about references and credentials and tradition. And this, like I said, the step-by-step system or process, things to be checklist. They really get excited about a good checklist, you know? So they want things to be very orderly. Uh, and then the last, um, the fourth uh, category is a, no- is a knowledge-based person. And a knowledge-based person really likes uh, science and technology and the big picture and, you know, things that are innovative and interesting and they're always trying to gain more knowledge and learn more they're very intelligent smart people um so there's all these different categories of personalities now of course we all are a little bit of each one it's just what are the lead what is the lead for us uh, that's going to be most impactful because everybody has a little bit of all of them in them True, because uh, when you, you were saying all these things, so I was thinking, so I have qualities of this thing and this thing as well. So what am I? So And uh, I really love that you clarified at the end that a person is always the mix of multiple personality types, but it's mm-hmm. all about the major one that comes with it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so at the end, I'm going to ask you this one question. So what personal type do you think I am? by talking with it. So I'm not going to ask you right now, but at the end. (laughs) I don't know that I have enough information (laughs) to give you that answer. (laughs) Yeah, okay. I will try to answer that at the end uh, after having the conversation for, I don't know, maybe we have around 30 more minutes. Anyway, 
So, so a person knows that this is his personality. How? What can he do to actually match his personality with the other person? So, let's say um, I'm a B type person. He's let's say not B is for it's a blue 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 pin that I mentioned, and mm -hmm. and the other person is an action person. Mm -hmm. So how or the prospect is an action person. So how can he go from being a blueprint person and he has prepared everything as a blueprint from the perspective of a blueprint person? How can he present to an action taking person? Yeah. So if he is, uh, if he's a blueprint person, his presentation is really heavy in the blueprint world, and he notices that this person's really fast paced, and um, that they are really focused on their goals and achieving well, and so they're they're really picking up that this person is that action taker. Then most likely it is best to um, just condense and shorten what you're going to go through. So maybe if you have like you know 15 slides, maybe just kind of uh, fly through many of them and, and just give the major points, right? This is the most important thing that's going to help you achieve the goal quickly and efficiently. And this is why this is good. And that, you know, I think that's probably going to um, be sufficient, you know, so they just don't want to take, uh, they don't want to talk too slow. They don't want to take too long and they don't want to give too much information. And once a an action taker has made a decision, the number one thing a blueprint should not do is keep talking. Don't talk them out of the sale. If they're ready to go, then, you know, great. Let's have your credit card here. Sign the contract. We're done. You know, because when an action taker makes a decision, they're ready to go. And a mistake that they can make is continuing to sell all the steps and systems and processes that they love so much about the product or service because they're a blueprint, right? Yeah. So they have to be careful of that. Interesting. I think I, I, I'm not sure if I'm a good improvement person yet because I, I don't know yet. You know it after 30 minutes. <laughs> So just to pay attention, everybody listening, he expects me to guess what he is. However, he doesn't know. So I'm just saying. Yeah, absolutely. Who knows? Anyway, so uh, let's move on to the next topic. So not next one, which can I connected to it? So I literally forgot that question. But anyway, so whom would you say your three biggest influencers in your life are? So I think the biggest influencer in my life is God. Um, I really am connected highly to my values. Everything I do and everything that influences me in my life is connected to my values and my morals and my ethics and um, how I believe I'm supposed to live my life um, as, a, as a good human being, right? Being the best version of myself. I think from a sales perspective, I've been influenced by a lot of amazing people. Um, I love Mark Allen. He's a multimillionaire of a, a New World Publishing, I think is the name of his company, but um, he's done some amazing books. Zig Ziglar, of course, Dale Carnegie, Napoleon Hill, and um, Brian Tracy, and all the greats who've written so many wonderful wonderful things on sales that I have read over and over and over again. You know, even Jack Canfield, I'm reading The Power of Focus again. And um, so I think I've been inf influenced by a lot of the um, amazing people in my industry. Uh, but I think uh, most importantly, uh, I've been influenced. Uh, I, I just celebrated 21 years with my amazing husband. And um, Congrats. I think uh, yeah, thank you. We've been together 22 years and he's one of the most amazing people I've ever had the opportunity to know as well as share my life with. So um, I think he's a huge influence on me. Okay, so you literally mentioned, I don't know, around eight to ten people. I think <laughs> or more. I can't count. Three is not enough. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree. So, so there are a few, like a lot of conflicts or like miss. What would I say? Uh, there are reverse perspectives or like different perspective of people in terms of the the wordings that Dale Carnegie use. Let's say uh, uh, one one topic that I actually said in a pre one of my previous episodes 
which is I, I don't think it's published yet, but it will be published before this episode. So that there is a book called How, like not how to, but in, in the book of Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People, he said yes. uh, that you have to say, you have to go from in a way that yes, 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 and then you flow with it, and then you can get the sales in that process that if you if someone says yes 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 and with this yeah. flow i can get the sale but in a book called how to N never split the difference yeah i got the name so it never split the difference chris vaughn said this so he's an AFA agent and he said that this process is not as effective as it seems because there is like in his experience that after working with he criminals basically for for all of his life he said that if you if you go with no 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 then there is a high possibility higher possibility of getting yes then get getting a no from from the, the, the traditional way which was believed that if you go with yes you will get more sales but this is not as true right now. So what's your take on this? So, I mean, you know, there, there are two sides of the table here. So, you know, getting a multiple yeses throughout your presentation, getting, uh, I don't know, you, using the no, I'm, I'm not sure that I believe with that, but I think better than both of those and maybe even a combination of both is trying to make sure you know doing your research so the power of research when you're prospecting before you make this uh, presentation at all is really important because uh, if you know exactly what your prospect wants what it is they're after and that's something else that that's actually my favorite thing that's in the dale carnegie book is by helping people get what they want is how you will actually get what you want so if you know what they're trying to achieve and you're able to make those connections and help them achieve them uh, that's much more powerful and that's the concept of reciprocity uh, than taking through them a series of questions for yeses or no's or maybes or whatever's, you know, really, I, I love the question of, you know, if you're working with someone and they've reached out to you for your product or service, you know, just reconfirming. So this is, you know, this product or service is something you think you need your you need or your company needs to make whatever reason they want it, right? Is it to make their life easier? Is it to save them time? Is it it's going to do something that's going to transform where they are now to where they want to be? So, you know, so. I would say to you, so this is something you feel like is really going to help you launch your podcast and get you thousands of, you know, downloads and get a lot of exposure. So you believe this service can do that for you, right? And if you, and you, I mean, because this is why we're having a conversation. This is why I'm presenting to you. You believe this can do this. Well, if that's the case, then what is going to make it at this moment where it would be just, um, impossible for you to not sign the contract today and you know submit the deposit and have us get started what could we do right now so that that would just be you would absolutely want to do that and sometimes of course people say well you can cut the price in half right you know and then i'll sign today and we'll do this well that's great because you got the client to start thinking that way right and then i say oh well you know obviously i'm not going to cut my price in half but I might offer two exclusive bonuses just to this customer to say, okay, well, instead of cutting my price in half, I can offer you these two great things. And then the value of those two thing, great things gives so much to the plan that it feels like they've you know, gotten it for more than less than half, right? And so they've already kind of decided in their mind and told me that if they I, I cut the price in half, they would sign today, no doubt, it would be a no brainer, right? This would be something they would wanna do because it's gonna help them you know, get a lot of 
of exposure and get thousands of downloads for their podcast. Um, and then I've given them these extra bonuses and that typically seals the deal. So there's lots of different techniques. Um, I just did a class on 21 sales closing techniques and ways to help get people uh, to make the commitment and really make the sale, right? Move them to action, to sign the agreement, submit the deposit, get the money going and get started with whatever your product or service is. So I think I'd approach it from that way. I don't think that, um, you know, I think it's also about the confidence of the salesperson. So if I believe that if I see three questions in my presentation that make you say yes, uh, and that means, and you say yes, that means I'm gonna get the sale then, then it's probably true, right? Because I believe it, you know? So some of it's too, I mean, and if I believe what this other person says about using no, and that's gonna get me the yes. Well, if I believe that strategy, if I've tested it out, if I've tried it um, and it works for me, then I have confidence with it, then I'm probably gonna get the sale that way too. Uh, so I really do think that's partly personal, um, uh, style, belief, practice, confidence. Uh, you know, I mean, people have been making sales for thousands of years with their carpet bag, walking door to door, the vacuum clean salesman. And it's all, you know, come different ways, you know, so. Absolutely. So I, I took out two major points from what you said. The first one is that Believing is the most important thing. The, it really doesn't matter what the way is, but the way you believe will be most effective. And the second thing is that it's not all about giving discounts because mm -hmm. it's, it's about get, giving more value than they are getting, get, they, the customers are getting yeah. get out of it. When you're, when, if yeah. you can increase it, then they're going to get it. That's it. The same thing mm -hmm. as getting discount. Absolutely. So now, the next topic that things I, I want to ask you is, so what advice would you actually give to your younger self? So let's say you're uh, just getting out of high school. What do you advise you to give, give to yourself? I would tell myself um, two things. I would tell myself that um, one of the smartest things I ever did the whole time that I, you know, even all through school, elementary school, is I use my time well. So uh, I would say I would definitely remind myself to keep doing that. So if I'm in a car, if I'm doing dishes, if I'm checking email, I'm listening to an audiobook or a workshop or a training or a motivation. And I, I've always done that in my life. And it's one of the best things I've ever done. So I tell my younger self, don't mess up, make sure you keep doing that. Because that's something I've done right my whole life. The next thing I would tell her is um, be brave and start your own company sooner because you're awesome. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a great piece of advice. So how how old were you when you started listening to like audiobooks or anything motivational? Oh my gosh, I um, I probably was in. Uh, I want to say the fourth and fifth grade, I started listening to things that were inspiring and motivating. And I really loved the true stories of us, you know, you know, based on a true story kind of real life where they went from a hardship, turned around to something amazing. And so I think very young, I was very young. Okay. So in terms of audiobooks, when you started it? Oh, I'm um, probably as soon as they were available. I'm a lot older than you. <laughs> I'm 48 and fabulous. So I've been, I have the cassette tapes. Now I don't have eight tracks, but I have the cassette tapes for Tony Robbins, uh, you know, and I oh. still have a Walkman that plays <laughs> them. <laughs> That's really cool. You, you know what? So when I was young, I used to play with cassette tapes. So I have a lot, not in my home, but in my grandparents' home, there are a lot of cassette tapes, which I don't know where it is right now. But when I, I was young, there, there were plenty or plenty of them. And used to play with them a lot. So we, what we used to do is like, we used to bring out the whole one, like uh, the, that tape, that one. I, I know, And 
bring that hole out and then slowly bring that hole in. <laughs> oh, no. it, 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 it was so fun at the time, you know, you know, like, I, I don't know, I was nine or like nine, ten or th- around that age. So it was so fun back then to do yeah. that. <laughs> I don't know. That's no, funny. <laughs> that's not funny. That's fun. Actually, that's okay, fun. Okay, if you say so. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. We do a lot of great things in our childhood, which are actually great. Yeah. So, yeah. How old were you, I, I would ask, when you started listening to audiobooks? Because I am I, I am very curious to know this. So, like I said, I, I was very young. So, I, um, I probably was in at least the sixth grade where I was listening to audio tapes on uh, different uh, self-help kind of things. And I know I started reading much earlier uh, inspirational stories and books and self-help information and ways to make myself, you know, better uh, and do well. So. I'm so jealous, jealous of you. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, honestly, so I started, I don't know, maybe I, in 10, yeah, 10 grade, no, not, not 10, but 11 grade. Well, that's child. still younger than most people, so don't worry. <laughs> I know, but still, I'm still jealous of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so what is so? This is a common question that I always ask. So, what is education and learning to you? Um, I think it's paying attention and listening, because. And also having really strong values. So education and learning is great. Um, Just like you just talked about with Dale Carnegie and the other gentlemen and the different sales styles, they don't agree. So just because something is out there to learn um, and there's something new and great and whatever, I think you still, from an educational standpoint, we have to make some of our own decisions, right? Is this ethical? Is this moral? Do I agree with this concept? You know, we really have to have... Um, we have to pay attention and listen, you know, so I think you can learn in just about any environment. Um, and I think hands-on learning is a hundred percent, um, more effective than any other kind of learning. Now, not to say I don't think there's value in higher education, getting a master's degree or doctorate. I think that's brilliant and wonderful. Um, but I also believe that, um, actually doing things and pioneering things and trying things no one's tried before uh, is the best education and, and teacher. Uh, so. Great description. Actually. So tell us about the gift that you wanted to share with our, our audience. Absolutely. So I have um, a free personality uh, assessment test that you can take. It's totally free. It takes 90 seconds. So it's really fast. You're able to crack your code, your personality type code, and then you'll receive in an email. um, It they vary and because they're custom to you um, between 20 and 30 pages of a report that goes through all the details of you know, uh, what your what some of your strengths are, uh, what things will cause you to lean into or buy into an idea, a product, a service, what things are going to really pull you away. And the reason this is so fascinating and important is because the more we can learn about what moves us to action and how we base our decisions and how we function and how we show up in the world and what we're doing, uh, the better we'll be able to understand other people and how they show up in the world and what moves them to action so that we can then listen and pay more attention uh, and then be able to speak other people's language, right? Uh, Their personality language, not just their, you know, native tongue language. So uh, that, you know, I think that that is uh, so powerful and so wonderful. And I'll make sure that you have a, a custom link for that um, to share with whoever would like. It's a lot of fun. It's not great just for sales and business, which it is really great for that, but it's also great for relationships and families. And um, an interesting thing, I have seven children. So we have five girls and two boys. 
And uh, one of my daughters, I remember when she was very small, she, as soon as she could talk, she sounded like she was 25 years old. Um, but she was a very small and two or three years old. And she had her hand on her hip and she stomped her foot as hard as she could. And these were her exact words. I do not kid you. She said, mom, you cannot parent all your children the same. You have to parent me differently. And this is coming from a little toddler. OK, like I'm telling you, I was like, you know, who, who is this person? She speaks like she's 40, you know, I mean, um, and truthfully, at that point, I was a very young mom and I had no idea how to parent, parent her any different than I was trying to parent all the rest of the kids. And uh a few years ago, when I went through this certification process, I got her to crack her code. And I don't know if you've ever saw the movie Avatar or not, but I had this genuine Avatar moment because for the first time, I could see her and I could understand better than I ever had before. And that was... Um, amazing and wonderful. And our relationship has been closer and stronger uh, than it ever has been. And so, you know, personality science and communication is really all about relationships. And I think that's the most important reason we're on this planet to begin with. So um, I hope they enjoy the free gift. It's really fun. Um, my husband and I said, we've married a long time when we were going to take the test, we tried to guess each other's and we didn't tell each other. And then we both guessed wrong and we swapped reports and read about each other and we're like oh my gosh this is definitely so you you know so it was fun and interesting and educational you know it's good to try to really um understand the people that you love that you work with that you want to be your client you know we need to try to understand one another it's interesting so i'll show two things here so first of all I'm, I'm running with the link right now. So right after this, I'm going to apply, apply for it. And second thing is, so I'm not sure which Avatar movie you're saying about. So there are two Avatar movies. So one is uh, like the people, in, the blue people, of the blue people, blue agents basically. And the second one is Avatar, the last year I've been which people hate at this moment. <laughs> which one? <laughs> I'm sorry, say it again. Uh, so one is the one is the Disney one, which was uh, all about like the blue aliens. Everyone knows that. Oh yeah, the, yeah. The thing. Are you saying about that? Oh, you mean the Avatar movie? Yeah. Yeah, that in that movie there was a scene where they say to one another that I see you. And um, they they mean they see like the depths of the person, right? And um, when I had that moment with my daughter, I felt like I could really see her. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. That was a great thing. So I'll share the yeah. links. I, I'll share this link with the audience. And other than that, so where can they find you online? So uh, my website is jessicalkoch.com uh, and um, I'm on LinkedIn and I'm all the places. I'll make sure you have all the links and all the ways to find me, but um, I'm on YouTube. I'm, um, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram. <laughs> like you have to try hard not to find me because I'm everywhere. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'll add the links, all, all the links with the captions for the listeners who are listening, like not the listeners, to, to the viewers who are seeing this on, on YouTube or Facebook. And I'll add the, all the links with the description on the other podcasting platforms. And thanks for coming on the show. Thank and, you for having me. Yeah. And thanks for the listeners who listen to the show. And yeah, and I hope everyone of who are listening have, or seeing are having a great day. Bye.